is May the 21st, 2022. My name is Chris and this is the future of photography. The future of photography. And with me, Adrian and Jeremiah. Yay! Hello! <laughs> How's it going, guys? Oh, good. Yeah, good. good Sorry, good. I missed I'll last week. I was I was out having fun doing photography you, stuff with you my were friends. Which... Yes, you were doing photo stuff. That is always a good excuse. Your excuse when you're doing photography. We were just talking about it. Yeah, well, you know, it's it, it it's not like it, it's not like it's happened often enough in the last couple of years to be able to get out and see people. But I thoroughly enjoyed my Saturday hanging out with my mates. Lots of stuff going on, loads of crazy stuff, mostly analog things. Uh, a little bit of digital as well. Uh, so but... what happened to you? I mean, I remember you being the no, I don't do analog kind of guy. And you've slowly made a move to the dark side again. Yeah, well, about the only constant thing in my photography journey is my fickleness. So <laughs> you know, it's, it, I am, I am, you know, because this is this is my playtime, right? This, yeah. I, this is the sure. luxury time. This is the luxury time for me. Right? I, I, I get to play and I get to just go with the, you know, go with the whimsy. Um, and so, uh, you know, recently, as you know, we talked about it on the podcast. I bought a new film camera, a six by 12 medium format camera, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um so yeah there's that there's that going on uh there's digital stuff going on there's uh, yeah it's just yeah it's nice to play and it's nice to be back out there and be sociable with it as well so so are i'm you, are, i'm all are, good are, are, I'm, I'm gonna ask a question for both of you before we get into uh, our topic uh, which is really how much time do you allocate or spend or want to spend on acquiring new technical skills oh that's a good question. I like to acquire new technical skills. I was doing some of that just last night, and that's going to be part of the topic of the conversation. Okay. Adding um, adding new skills uh, to the toolbox is uh, one of the things that gives me most satisfaction in photography. So I like too. to play, I like to experiment, and uh, I don't always get to it, which is why I'm looking forward to a week from now, I will be holding a, a, a one-week workshop. It's kind of the most important one. Uh, 30 people meet in an old abbey somewhere in southern Germany. And we have one week of playtime. And everything is taken care of. We get fed. We have rooms to stay in. It's uh, it's an old abbey. It's a beautiful uh, building. And um, people are now... We have, a, we have a Slack where we talk about things in the channel. Um, they have already figured out all the projects they want to do they're going to bring like tons of toys and things all mm -hmm. the all the all the cars boots are going to be full to the brim with <laughs> nice. whatever they can f figure out and it's going to be analog and digital and so on so this is a play week for me too i'm uh, looking forward to acquiring some new things oh god i'm looking forward to some play too though i've been uh, learning teaching myself how to code oh okay interesting and that is, uh, it's challenging. What kind what, of code are you what like code like processing? Apps, PJ, uh, P5JS. Okay. Python. 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 Okay. The Interesting. Usual is this a, a new career direction you're taking? Mm, I mean, you know, DevOps engineers are all the rage. These things. over my generative stuff. Um, ah, okay. You know. Yep. That helps. That helps for o that. Opening for sure. the hood, as it were. Because yes. now I do a lot of that, uh, I'd say manually. In other words, I create the parameters and then generate. I'd like to see how a machine with set parameters would do the same as what I'm doing or adjust it. Mm -hmm. so. Very interesting. All right. So anyway, let's kick it off. What's what's your skill project, Adrian? Ah uh, well, so uh, well, it's a, it's a clue in the title of the show this week, isn't it? So I I am uh, investing time and uh, to to learn a new skill in production of a photographic zine, something I have talked about for many many years and never got around to doing. And uh, yeah, now I've started, which is uh, which is good. I'm enjoying. So it. let's 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 do a quick round of definition for all yeah, those old people among us who don't question. know what a zine is. It's a zine is short for magazine. Yeah, yeah. Um, although you know, originally, I believe, um, certainly in the UK, it's kind of taken on a, a, a meaning in its own right. Mm -hmm. um, usually refers to a small, you know, uh, fairly 
uh, fairly roughly produced sometimes, well, sometimes roughly produced, um, you know, sort of little booklet magazine, small magazine traditionally would have been, you know, photocopied uh, at, your, at your local photocopier, um, you know, often associated with, you know, the music scene or, or other underground uh, or non-mainstream art scenes. So we're looking at a physical object. So yeah. Of. Yes. It's not, it's not on the web page. It's follow up question. Uh, did you pick up an old Xerox machine for your house? <laughs> <laughs> Tempting as that is. <laughs> really right? cheap. Now, Tempting that is to install one in the garage. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, no, I, I didn't. Um, although I could, I suppose, go to the office, go to my office and, 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 and use the one there. Uh, no, I didn't do that. Um, inspired by, but but not quite that retro. <laughs> did you right. create cr creating it uh, as an analog, creating it as a digital, and then going analog? Uh, this one uh, I'm creating digital, uh, and uh, it, it, although interestingly, the 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 uh, as I'm I'm part way through it at the moment got to got to a completed first draft but still maybe some work to do I don't want to go too precious on it because yeah don't want to let perfection be the enemy of good right I want to get it out there uh, but having said that um, I do you know I have been using lots of layers in my digital production uh, and I could easily imagine doing something that has a, a more physical collage kind of you know uh, layout to it. Um, you know, in the future, but not this time around. All right. So um, you've uh, given me a PDF of it. Is it okay for me to put that on the screen? <gasps> well, no, no, no. <sighs> Can it's I do here. that next time? No, no this is the acid absolutely. test, though, isn't it? This is the acid test. Or, or okay, um, this, this, I, if this was, was if it were ready, I would say yes. But this is a very rough. First it's a work draft, in progress. Okay. Sh sh shared with you guys just to support the conversation rather than anything else. So. But so I, what are the, it is absolutely to be shared, and I will be printing. Yeah, uh, I mean, it'll be a fairly short run, but it will go out to other people. So yeah, it is definitely to be shared. All right. Um, so what are what are the things that what are the areas that you need to or that you did need to invest in in terms of building up skills, learning new stuff? Oh well, in the skill side, um, it's the uh, what historically I suppose you'd call the desktop publishing. It's the the layout type stuff. Um, but to do that from a creative point of view to try and work out you know, uh, as well. So it's definitely been there, there's lots of things I can talk about about the process. But the technical thing, um, it's a long, long time, like 20 odd years since I've done any layouts of uh, of booklets or, or anything right. like that for print. Um, uh, and so and in those days, there was fairly small sort of you know, software getting started manuals, you know, from. Yeah, so n nothing, nothing too creative. <laughs> uh, a follow-up question here on on layouts. I mean, you have everything from being able to do it in the most simple fashion using, say, if you're working on a Mac, Pages has mm -hmm. a very integrated way of of laying out things, or you can go right to Adobe, and and get into the weeds very, very. Mm -hmm. um, in a much more complicated, complex way of how book book designers often work. So, and probably there's a litany of software that runs the gamut between them. I'm I'm assuming. What do you use? Well, this is part of the technical skill. So it's a it's a software application that's new to me. Um, and what I chose to use was Affinity Publisher. Mm -hmm. oh. So uh, I I've had uh, Affinity Photo for years. Um, use it on the Mac, use it on the iPad. Um, and so when it came to doing something that was more about layouts, um, it's good to have a publisher. What I hadn't quite realized is just how nicely integrated the products are. Actually, you can just choose any layer in any layout and you can switch from what they call photo persona to, to publish persona. And if you click, click on the photo persona, you just get all the affinity photo tools. So you can like everything you'd expect and it all works seamlessly inside the one thing. It's great. Yeah. I've been I've been weaning myself off of Adobe uh, for the last few years, and the the whole Affinity Suite by Serif is just the lifesaver. There, they are so good, they're so modern, and so um, integrated that um, yeah, it's, it's a it's a joy to work with these tools. So, are, are you recommending this? I I, I have the um, I have several yes. things on Affinity on my computer. 
but I'm so locked into the Adobe right now, and I haven't had the time to kind of mentally move over because I obviously it, I understand everything. It is um, it it is one of those trade-offs between tw twenty years of muscle memory and uh, uh, trying having to relearn a couple of things. Uh, but on the other hand, um, honestly, I've it, affinity the, the entire suite feels like a fresh of a uh, breath of fresh air because uh. it uses the the like all the features the multi threading the a lot of things you know the, the adobe i'm i I'm, I'm don't want to i don't want to bash adobe but they have been yeah the the underlying infrastructure isn't the most modern one at this point so um yeah i see i see affinity as a as a viable competitor my my brother is a graphic designer professional graphic designer he switched away from adobe the moment affinity was good enough oh and and uh, do they have a quote lightroom version that is the only thing they don't so that's the only thing that i still use from adobe because there is no but there are competitors but the whole in integrated asset management plus editing plus printing plus whatever Lightroom so is still into, the best. For example, you're you're into uh, say what I would consider, you know, semi crude uh, ed editing on on Lightroom, though it's become much more sophisticated oh, over it's the really last good three now, years. Yeah. yeah, with matting and all, all manner of things. But when you want to do more of a deep dive, you can just go edit in. And I'm wondering, of course, they, they never go edit in Affinity. Oh yes, you, you can do that. You can, you can do that though. I believe. I do. Like, and then I do a back in. I do a full and round trip, and uh, it, it 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 can read and save PSD format, so you will be able to uh, well, to seamlessly integrate it. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's very encouraging. I may just jump in. Try it. Try it. so I I, I, like the, I didn't have the muscle memory with it with Photoshop because I never really used Photoshop. I mean, historically as a you know, as a photographer, I, I was an aperture user. So uh -huh. I, sorry I, to hear that. I, Beta I also remember, Betamax very Yeah, strong. well when Aperture when Aperture and Lightroom first came out, I remember doing the free trials of them both and thinking Aperture made a load of sense to me and Lightroom made no sure sense did. at all to me. So I bought into Aperture. Uh and then of course, you know, years later it got retired. And so I became a Lightroom user, you know, just you know, by default, really. Never really enjoyed it. Although, yeah, very powerful tool, don't get me wrong, but never really enjoyed it. Never really felt creative using Lightroom. Uh, and so uh, eventually I, I let my Adobe subscription go. Um, and I only ever had the the photography one, you know, the, the, the $10 euro pound one yeah, a month. Um, no. And so the fact that I could buy a professional class publishing tool like Affinity Publisher for less than one month's rental of Adobe software, um, you know, and have that as a perpetual license. Sure. Um, it, it, that's a compelling thing for somebody like me. Now, you know, as I say, you know, I have the luxury of this just being me play you know, me playing. This is my, this is my, uh, this is my have, hobby. Have you played with Lightroom uh, publishing? I mean, I know they, they integrate with blurb or whatever it is, and, yeah. and then you can take it out to a PDF. Uh, I've I have never, done a little bit. I've done a bit of, um, you know, soft proofing uh, in Lightroom yeah. over the years, but, no, I'm talking about taking it out and actually laying out, you know, they have integrated layouts, et cetera, that allows you to I don't, take I a, don't think it. it's it's flexible enough um, for a zine type of application. No, I'm not, not sure about that, but, but I've played yeah. with it and uh, it, it was never... Uh, Adrian, yes, it was never fun using that part of the program. I use other parts, and I feel quite creative in it. But that part, the whole book creation part, is not um, good. Yeah, I don't. I'm. I'm not a fan of it. So uh, yes, yeah, so to, to, to answer your question, Chris, that's the technical learning I've been doing as part of this process. It's nice to have. I wouldn't. Uh, it's nice to have a project to work on. Yes, yeah, so an, an outcome to achieve. Because I don't think, although I love tech, yeah, although I love picking up new te techniques. I don't think I would have chosen just to dive into, you know, a professional layout application just for kicks. <laughs> I don't have that kind of time, to be honest. <laughs> but having said that, you know, having a project to do, something to get on with, uh, it works really well. And I'm, you know, I've only been using it for a couple of days, but uh, it seems pretty intuitive. Um, and, you know, 
it's uh, and of course like all software these days there are many many youtube videos with hints and tips and things like that so you're never far away from help so uh, it's good it's it's um it's been an interesting one all right and what about uh, sending it out do you send it out by mail by pdf people to print it themselves um do you have a? Are you planning on having a subscription list? Um, <laughs> mail serve. Well, <laughs> I tell you what. So uh, one of the things I've been thinking about is this. Is you know, and and Jeremiah, you've you've challenged me on a couple of these things over the, you know, uh, over the time we've we've been talking. You know, one is that you know creating a body of work is a very different exercise from you know just you know editing your hero shots, and you know creating a specific output really focuses as well and you know getting stuff out there you know we had the talk a few weeks ago about is the metaverse ready for me yet <laughs> and it, uh, yeah uh and so all of that for me has come into the the creative side so yeah it's uh it, it's been a really interesting process um you know it's it the, you know, even from the sort of thing about like why a zine or what am i trying to do and um i think it's what would I say about it to try and summarize it? Um, I think it's it's been a re yeah, all the things you said I would learn, right? I'm in the process of learning. So, first of all, I'd like to summarize by saying you're absolutely right. In fact, both of you have said this to me in the past. So, um, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right, both of you, that you know, creating a body of work is different. Um, and you know, you find yourself reaching into the image archives for, for stuff that you didn't think would make it on its own, the things you didn't put uh, you know, as a favorite or a three or a four star shot, because sure. then you think, oh, I've got this, this, this thing that, you know, that, that we need to work out. But then it, all, all of that creative and editing and selection stuff aside, to, to come back to your question, um, <laughs> is, is the motivation for it. And the, the, the thing that I came up with is is and it's things that I'm I'm really trying to do more of it this year because we we've, we've lost a couple of years is to be more sociable and I think well why am I doing this what am I trying to say and I don't really have a lot to say I don't really have a lot of messages I want to share with the world but I do like socializing with people and I would like to uh, uh to expand the number of people I socialize with and to learn to you know, learn about new people, meet new people, learn about new ways of doing things. So what I put in the zine, uh, I, and you'll see this, I think it's inside the back cover on the on the, the rough draft that you guys have got. Uh, it's just a little statement that says, you know, I'm doing this to make new friends. Uh, and, you know, I would love to get some feedback. And I put a little QR code in it, which if you scan it, it'll, yeah, it'll pop up a little email you can send to me. And so what I'm encouraging people to do what I'd love for people to do is to actually give me some feedback. So the next one is better. And so we can start some conversations and make some new friends. So that's kind of the motivation. Well, it's not kind of, it is, it's the motivation for it for me just now is to, is to, to get it out there you know, and to use it to, as a, as a curiosity piece. Do, do you think that, Oh, go ahead, Chris. Um, no, I was, I was just, I was just, um, uh, looking at the zine and I was wondering, is that a monthly thing? Is that a regular thing? Do you do, are you planning to do this every, I'm asking because I've been, I've started this digital magazine, uh, online a while ago, like three months ago and, and I do it every week and, uh, it's been, a good experience because it forces me into a habit. It forces me into creating over and over and over again. So it it, for, it it furthers my like the routines of things, but also puts me um, on the spot to to deliver something. And that is an interesting and uh, important kind of exercise, I think. You know. It I, I had a question for for actually for both of you, just in terms of um, focusing one's attention on a body of work, whatever that means to people. Because for some people, it is just uh, creating work that is influenced by uh, a multiplicity of sources. In other words, very eclectic. What is the common thread? The fact that you are attached to it. The other way is to question, why do you really love a photograph that you took? Why you think it's one of your best? It's fantastic. You respond to it. And once you kind of question that, 
you may not have the answer, but, but even in questioning, you then apply that filter, as it were, to a lot of work. And that's where you start to use that image, that hero image, in a way as a bar that's set and start to look at images that may be similar in theme and technique and tone, whatever that is to you, and integrating that and going back to your work or promoting future work. And eventually that becomes the story of your work. And you could have threaded stories. And, you know, you look at a lot of zines that are out there, and this has been true, some are completely uh, eclectic, in a way one could say uh, culturally chaotic, which is also a representation of our culture. Uh, and some are very integrated with a very specific story, you know, trees in winter. The other would be chaos. And, and, and so I think we, we react to these things uh, in different ways, but they all are um, part of creating a body of work, which really means the kind of life journey of understanding what your work really is. I don't think you ever really get there. It's really for others to assume that. But for you, the constant questioning about why you're doing something or how you're doing something and what your reaction and why you don't like something and why you do, uh, that always is a propellant to do more. And, and so if that's reflected in a zine, I think that is really exciting for not only the creator, but for people who are uh, reading or, you know, observing or experiencing it. Hmm. So carry on. <laughs> well, so, uh, I mean, yeah, at the moment, I'm at the opposite end of the spectrum from Chris. Uh, you know, Chris, you set yourself a, a rhythm, a cadence. Uh, I haven't. I'm, I'm learning for the first time and enjoying going through it for the first time. Um, I think, you know, will there, will there be a regular thing? I don't know. I wouldn't want to say no to that. Um, I, it's not planned at the moment, but then rarely is anything that I do in photography planned. Uh, so the... Uh, I think that in the sense that there is a plan, it's it's the socialising and it's expanding the worldview again and it's learning about and, you know, uh, and, you know, in the same way as that I try and study photography from around the world to get a feel for how different cultures explore photography in the same way that I'm currently uh, well, as you know, I'm pretty much always reading some kind of sci-fi novel. Um, but at the moment, I'm cho I'm reading one by a Chinese author, and I'm choosing to read Three Body Problem. So it's not the Three Body Problem, although that is an awesome <laughs> that is an awesome series of books, and I have read those. Um, it's not even by the same author, actually. It's a different author, although translated into English by the same person. So, <laughs> um, but it's you know. It, you know, I, I like to try and understand other, you know, different views and different cultures angles into the topics that I love, like photography and like sci-fi and, and stuff like that to, you know, to try and broaden my own view. So I think where, yeah, yes, there'll be more zines when and where and how and why. And I, well, I, I don't know. Um, but there'll also be other kinds of output that again, increases, increases the surface area of my photographic experience, which is, sounds like a really yeah, a really silly way of wording it, but that's kind of what I want to do. It's like there's some, I heard it uh, a while, a phrase a while ago, you know, about increasing the surface area of your luck. And, and the idea of increasing the surface area of stuff really stuck with me. I don't know why. It's kind of like, you know, squirreled away into my head. Uh, and so, you know, I, I, I'm trying to increase the surface area of my pho pho photography, my, me, my creativity, my social experience you know my learning about art and t and craft and technique all of that um so it's a step <laughs> <laughs> yeah what do your kids have to say about that they haven't seen it yet actually because i've uh -huh. only put it together the last couple of days i don't know mm. what they'll say about it um uh, i i i hope they'll find it funny and engaging in some level um as i said it's yeah I, i'm not I'm not the sort of person who has a strong message to share with the world. I'm not a particularly evangelical about one thing or another. And, uh, and quite frankly, there are enough loud, meaningless voices in the world already. Um, my, yeah, mine, mine would not add a great deal. Um, and that's not me being, uh, 
you know, uh, it's not that's not a humble brag of any kind, right? That's not me, but yeah, you know, that, that's just fact, right? So, uh, I, I think hopefully they'd find it interesting. Hopefully, you know, others will find it interesting. Hopefully, I'll get some feedback and have some conversations around it. Yeah. So, how are you planning to reach people other than the intense reach of this little podcast here? <laughs> Well, I think um, that's a process over time, isn't it? So if I do a limited run of this first scene and it's got its call to action in the back um, uh, and, you know, about please get in touch, please give me some feedback. Yeah, let's start a conversation um, that might reach a small number of people. But then if I continue with other things that, you know, hopefully the, the circle will will widen over time. Um, mm -hmm. So. Um, other than that, there's the intensely pragmatic bit of it, which is that I'm going to send stuff through the post. So I'm going to need to know who it's going through to, and it's going to, you know, uh, and uh, I'm going to need their addresses, aren't I? So, so there's an element of that. Um, so the the listeners of this podcast could then order one from you if they wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, okay. um, you know, it's it's not even something that I, I was particularly thinking to sell in, the, uh, although there'll be a, you know, a cost of delivery. Giving things um, away for free means it's going to be expensive for you because everyone is going to go, okay. <laughs> well, that's okay. But, but 10,000 subscribers. Well, <laughs> if it gets up to that level, then clearly a, um, there'll, there'll be a different level of economics. But, you know, um, no, I mean, this is this is not going to be a, a high cost project this first time around. And yeah. yeah, and maybe I'll need to ask people to contribute a little bit to cover the cost or something like that. It's certainly not a money making exercise would, in any shape. Would you form. would you say that there is a direct correlation to people making their own videos on TikTok or YouTube, etc., and putting it out there? Hmm. Is that in a way a new kind of scene? That's an Social interesting media? question. Um, I ask it as a real question because I'm... Um, so that, that's, I'm I really think, it, um, so I'll give you a real answer. It'll be an answer on the fly, but I'll give you a real answer. Does it depend perhaps on their motivation? If the motivation... Yeah, so, you know, zines uh, uh, are often at least in part informational, aren't they? Uh, as well as, you know, you, you pick up a zine and tell you where the local gigs are, right? And when and what bands you're going to go see. So um, there's an element of that about a zine, Um the TikTok thing, I don't do TikTok, but the stuff that I do see that sort of you know, makes it into mainstream seems very narcissistic. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so I think it would depend for me. It would depend on the motivation. If you're, yeah, you know, so you know, if you if you're just doing self promotion on TikTok, I'd say maybe that's not a new kind of zine. But I think other things out there could, yeah, definitely. Good. I, it's a, it's yeah, a good I mean, question. I guess your 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 intention, which is to reach out and expand your social community, is that the same as you know putting out something for likes on a social system or making work that you think other people will respond to? That's a different mm. motivation for one's work. One that I don't really ascribe to because I think you want to make your own stuff and then put it out there and see what happens, but. But I think there is some linkage there. I'm not sure where or how, but... Um, it's a really good question. Um, I, I think, you know, the, I, I guess if you were to, to you know, decouple the, the, the ethos of a zine, you know, uh, from the medium of delivery of a zine, right? You know, zines came about originally because that was the way that you could you know, create and distribute them at a cost, wasn't it? Yeah, that was that yep. was the, the driving factor. Nowadays the, the cost of entry to all sorts of media is is very low. So yeah, I, I think if you could decouple it, then the medium could be anything you want in a way, could it? But is it then still can we still call it a zine? Because a zine has a has a has a a flair, a taste, a brand, uh, a, it is it is it is its thing. So for me Hearing zine is smelling the the the, the paper is feeling yeah, the yeah. the coarseness of the paper. Yeah, uh, seeing seeing tape. the <laughs> see, seeing the I don't know lack of contrast because the print isn't the the highest yeah. quality and so on. So zine zine for me is 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 a thing that I don't think is easy to just put 
in, into another medium, then That's it's not really, a scene. I, th I remember, I remember when um, Wired magazine came out, and that was kind of a game changer in terms of like the layout and stuff. Um, and then the web version of that was a very different thing. It wasn't the same. Well, so. Juxtapose magazine when it first came out was a published art magazine, very yeah. much like a zine in terms of its rawness. Let's call it a yeah, raw yeah, aesthetic yeah. fingerprints on. You can feel the, the effort not to be perfect. In other words, to have the human touch on it, because so much of what we see both online and in magazines and book publishing, there is a precision there, which... You know, the argument was when we went from, you know, wax discs, you know, LPs, etc., to CDs, and people were were like, oh, it's so cold. It <laughs> doesn't crackle so anymore. Cold. It doesn't crackle. There's no scratches. It's like horrible. On the other hand, if I compare listening to, say, a beautiful, um, you know, jazz pressing, on my system that is a LP and immediately listen to a MP3 of it, you can really see and feel the difference with no crackle. It's just the way the human ear hears, you know what I mean? It's not so precise. Um, there is an aesthetic, um, call it an imbalance between analog and digital. And I, you know, I think that with, coldness also comes specificity and that's okay for an aesthetic if you can transcend the um quote initial lack of emotion when you first encounter that because we don't really think of when we look at videos anymore we don't think of anything as being oh that's cold as opposed to that's warm but a zine is definitely a kind of lean in warmer more accessible less precious and be, by being less precious, it's easier to engage. Of course, when it becomes hyper-popular, all the haters come out and push it away. So I think it, it's very limitations of reach and aesthetic is part of its charm. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think it's... Yes, it's certainly the the. I'm not looking to create anything for that that's perfect for for two reasons. One is that that's not really what I was hoping to achieve, and secondly, uh, it's you know it, it's easier to to not be perfect. Although it's amazing how much creative effort needs to go into being not perfect. So it's not that you're being less perfect on the creative <laughs> yeah, it's side. True. It's, it, it's more that the production values of the th uh, of the physical artifact are, yes. are, are lower wow. in that it's sense. It's like the rug makers in the markets, you know, when, when you look at these beautifully woven uh, rugs in a Turkish market or, you know, a Jordanian market and whatnot, and, and you see like one thread is a different color, and that's because they say only Allah is perfect. And yes. so we, we <laughs> deliberately put in the flaw as a kind of representative acknowledgement that we as humans are flawed. Yeah. So having having been on both on both sides of this 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 um well at least print production as in I have uh, I've created an entire book uh, myself in well not not written but um, it's a cookbook for my mother and it was the photography and it was the 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 copy and it was putting things together manuscript and so on laying it out uh, getting it out not in print but in a in a uh, in ebook form um and then having written a couple of books of, on photography where my job was delivering photos delivering a manuscript and then having someone else take care of the rest of it but with both of these at the end the moment you have your product or the moment i have a product in my hands and it's it's the sum of a lot of things that went into it it's probably one of the best moments ever. So I kind of envy you for that because that's what you're doing right now. And I, you will you will love it the moment you get the box of uh, zines on your, well, on your doorstep. Well, I hope so. I, I hope that I do. I do love it. Um, I, I, I know as well that because of who I am, I will immediately see all the flaws in it. But that's, yeah, but that's one of the reasons for, for aiming to get something out 
you know, it's not quick and dirty as such, but equally it's not aiming to be perfect. And so I don't have to worry about it. I can enjoy the process and I can enjoy the learning and I can forgive myself for making mistakes when I get the box of prints back and there's loads of mistakes everywhere. So, so what's your what's your cutoff? Did you set yourself a time limit or uh, an hour, hour limit or a date or something to make sure that you do not run into fixing and fixing and fixing it? Um, um, I think it's more going to be a number of iterations. So, uh, you know, I, I, I've shared with you the the first completed draft. Uh, there's there's a couple of bits that I'm not quite happy with, but I'm just going to let it sit for a few days and then go back to it with slightly refreshed eyes. Uh, and and then uh, I don't want to wait. I just want, uh, I, you know, this this is a process, right? And the, the 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 one the one thing, the one publication, the one zine is not the end of the th process that's the start of the process, so uh, right? i mean that's basically basically i want to know when when can i show it here to the viewers oh in a yeah i know in a week or two it's not gonna be a long time a week or two just, okay yeah yeah, good. yeah it's good it's, the, the hard thing is it's starting. going up regardless now i hold you i hold you to that <laughs> So, so but that yeah so we'll uh well we'll, we'll make it a uh, an update point in a future show in a couple of weeks time just to yeah we Good. can we can share a little bit of it then and yeah once, once i get it out to the printers um which is i mean i would hope to get it out to the printers yeah to have them have a look at it and, and by the way week. is there an advantage for example of using a um a company like issue issu i think they're, they are um, that is a, a, I guess, a pool of these kinds of self-published um, magazines and zines um, to get your reach out, outstretched. And I'm, I'm not familiar with uh, exactly their model. Or their I, I'm aware model. of the concept. Um, I, I have to say, I haven't looked into it for this, this particular one because this is this is my first go, right? I, I want to, you know, I'm learning about the processes of making the thing. Um, uh, I haven't put any effort yet into learning about the processes of distribution. Um, so maybe that's something to, to add to the list uh, of things to do. At the moment, um, the, you know, from, from speaking to friends in the UK, uh, there is a printer here in the UK who does a, a decent quality uh, zine print uh, at reasonably, at very reasonable prices actually. Uh, I have exchanged a couple of emails with them just to understand things like, you know, what, um, just, just the technical stuff for printing, like, you know, what mm. bleed do you need on a page? I've seen the, like that, you know. I've, I've seen, I've seen uh, printing services that have like these, you know, these printing services where you can do anything from a business card to your stationery and so on. Um, and I've, I've seen several of those offering zines as well now. So you can have a two, four, eight, 16 page zine, um, made by them in bulk pretty much um, yeah. for yeah. decent pricing. Well, I won't talk about any particular printing companies just yet because uh, I have, you know, I, I've got one that I'm 90% sure I'll use, but I haven't chosen it yet. So yeah, we'll, we'll talk about Sounds that a bit, you know, uh, as we get to the update stage. Um, but uh, yeah, as I say, yeah, I've been speaking to some friends who've done some, you know, small books and, and you know, short run stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pick most likely uh, the one that m many of my friends are using. And we'll do that first one. See what I learn. Who knows? Very cool. All right. Are we ready for a little dive into our picks of the week? Yeah, sure. sure. Okay, I'll kick this off. Um, uh, it's this photo. I need to I need to talk about the Jim James Webb telescope <laughs> again because I can't I can't stop looking at these things. So what we're looking at here is is um, three photos of three different space telescopes off the exact same uh, spot in the sky. And uh, the first one, okay, when we say space telescopes, people now know the James Webb telescope. People, of course, know Hubble. But then there's others out there, and there's others out there that are, as James Webb, are looking at infrared. And the one, uh, the first one is WISE, which I think was launched in 2003, if I'm not mistaken. And then the Spicer telescope, which was launched in 2009, I think, and then the James Webb now. And uh, it's just blatantly obvious how much technology has progressed over the years because they're really, really uh, interesting in, in, in the way they, they have, the, the resolution has just 
That's improved astonishing. so drastically. Oh, uh, certainly, we agree. This is the greatest camera in in the universe oh, yes, yes, at yes. this point. And and, and we are still looking of, and we're still yeah. looking at engineering photos. Those are not even science photos. There, these are just right. the photos um, that that they use to check if the thing is in focus. So, so uh, yeah, which it is. It is incredible. I I I um I learned something yesterday or the day before or something like that. I think I got it from the um the XKCD comic strip, mm -hmm. which is that, uh, and it was about it was about taking photographs of stars or, or or how they appear, and it and it was it's something like this. It's 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 um galaxies that or stars that are further away at the very edges of the, of the visible universe actually will appear bigger than things that are closer to us. It's like, wow, that sounds interesting. And the reason is that the light has taken so long to reach us that when the light actually was emanated by those bodies, they were a lot closer to us than the things that are now in the middle ground. And it's like, wow, that's amazing. What a fantastic thing to learn. So, yeah. Space in is other weird. words, <laughs> yes, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Space like, is weird. You just can't figure it out. Or it's all a mystery and embrace it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jeremiah, your pick is this one. Uh, from my hometown, a zine, a very eclectic zine out of Montreal, and um, just one that is all over the map. So uh, p part of the charm of this particular zine is that you never know what you're going to get, and you can basically plunge in in a random way and, and find things that you may not have ever um, been able to discover on your own. Uh, so um, I just thought it was a good shout out to uh, a form of presentation that I like. Cool, and that this is a, fun. a digital zine, that, yeah. Yeah, they have video and audio and things in there. Hard to I print. Think, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, hard to hard print. To, hard to print I think video, they do yeah. make a printed version. <laughs> All right, and last but not least, Oh, well, that, this this loops back, right? This closes the loop on my technical learning. Um, Affinity or Serif. I can. Uh, I think the company is called Serif. The, the, Serif is the company. Affinity is the, the product line. Yes, I think it's pronounced line. Serif. Why the, or Serif? Go. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> Serif. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't even know. Anyway, Affinity, right? Uh, I've got a spring sale on fifty percent off everything. They do this and all the time. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, uh, and uh, actually, one of the reasons I want to make this my pick of the week is not just because Affinity Designer is, not Designer, sorry, Affinity Publisher is the tool that I'm using. Uh, it's that it actually gave me the psychological nudge to get me over the edge into production. I'd been humming and hawing about what tool to use and, and uh, you know, to, to do the layouts. And, you know, I, I knew how I needed to set up a document and it just all seemed, you know, uh, it was, there were just barriers to entry, right? You know, I thought, well, I could use a, a word processor or I could use a, a you know, a Affinity Photo or whatever. It just all seemed clunky. And then this dropped in my email, in my email 50% off sale, 25 quid or whatever it is for professional it's, layout yeah. software. And I was just like, that is so easy to say yes to. <laughs> totally, totally. That's a no-brainer. Um, and, and I use Affinity Designer almost daily. I use a like if, if you see the thumbnails of, of our um, of our little show here on on YouTube, those are from I do these in designer is affinity photo. Um, I haven't used publisher that much, but I still have it because why not? And uh, at least affinity photo and designer are always uh, also available on the iPad. so you can mm. I think for a tenor probably I and have, to. Uh, yeah, they're about there. They're not much. I've got affinity, and they're and they're compatible. So you can you can start yeah. and edit on the iPad and then continue on your on your uh, computer. It's yeah. Oh, it's, good. Yeah, because I use it on my iPad, iPad uh, because I I don't think that Adobe has their suite really dialed in on the <laughs> iPad. <laughs> I think <laughs> say, I think they have. Um, I think Affinity have feature parity across the platform. They do. Um, and they and the files sync over iCloud, so you can uh, you can be editing right. on the go on your iPad and then pick it up on your computer when you want yeah, to do yeah you know, a bigger mm -hmm. screen or something like that. So good. Um, yeah, you know, I haven't got Designer. I, I think pu Publisher as well, but now now I know that they're all fully integrated. Publisher like is on not on the iPad yet, unfortunately. No, no, it says it's coming soon on the website, but uh, and we're and we're still waiting for uh, Serif's. 
uh, let's say, Lightroom com competitor that they've been working on for about five years now. So that's, um, yeah. As they say in Jamaica, soon come. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, let's see. This has turned into a bit of a Adobe critical episode. <laughs> <laughs> There goes our sponsorship. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure they would have sponsored us anyway. Uh, anyway, no, I'm I'm a, I'm such a fan of the Serif project uh, products. It's well, really I'm, I'm pulling down publisher as soon as we're off the air. Well, I tell you, yeah. what, you do that right, and we'll collaborate on the next thing. We'll do it. Yeah. We'll, we'll do we'll a, a collaboration. We'll put a little zine out of Tfop. Yeah, why not? That sounds cool. Anyway, we will be back in a week from now, I guess. And until then, everyone, take care and visit us online. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Mm -hmm.